In this episode, we walk through the income statement of AT&T. We talk about some of the challenges that the industry is facing, the business model of AT&T, and some of its opportunities for success in the future. This episode of Strategy Simplified focuses on AT&T as a reinvented company, but where will the future take them? Find out in this episode. If you look at AT&T through the eyes of history, you see a company that has successfully regenerated itself. In the midst of a challenge of moving over into the wireless space, when AT&T was one of the largest landline operators in the country, AT&T successfully crossed the chasm and they managed to integrate their culture and their talent into providing wireless service for much of the United States. In addition, AT&T struck some really smart deals, some of the first closed deals with Apple to get the iPhone onto their platform, and they were able to generate significant subscriber growth because of their really smart deals. However, in the last couple of years, AT&T has battled, and today on Strategy Simplified, we're going to talk a little bit about why. First of all, we're going to take a look at the profit and loss statement, or the consolidated statement of income for AT&T. The most recent year that we have is 2019 reported. And so we're going to look at 2019 back through 2017 and see some of the changes in the business to get a sense of what's happened and what kind of business AT&T is in. In addition, we're going to talk a little bit about some of the challenges and changes that are happening inside the wireless and the other industries that AT&T is a part of, in particular in the media space, in order to understand how this business is likely to be affected going forward. First of all, let's just start with a breakdown of what makes AT&T AT&T. Is this a fixed cost or a variable cost business? If you said a fixed cost business, you are right. This business is very focused on building out a network and then selling capacity in that network to its customers. Their goal is to operate at near capacity in order to best maximize the network and the infrastructure that they've had to build. Because of this, you can see that the operating revenues are broken into two pieces, service and equipment. And then the cost of revenues are broken into three pieces. The equipment is one piece of that. And you can see that the equipment is basically a net net. So whatever they're spending and making on equipment um, are almost equivalent. So there's really no benefit or gain to the business. It's just a core part of the operation. However, the broadcast programming and operations, those specifically related to the Time Warner and DirecTV acquisitions are a pretty significant part of the cost of the business, about $21 billion in 2017, leading up to about $31 billion in 2019. And then other costs of revenues, not depreciation and not amortization, which includes just other there are things like purchasing frequencies for the cell phones. Uh, that is going to be $34 billion in 2019, down to 33 in 2018 and 38 in 2017. So one of the things that you see is that as the organization has grown, you don't see super significant growth, not on parity with the growth on the revenue in their cost of revenue, which is one clue that this is a very strong fixed cost business. The other thing that we see is if we take out equipment and then we look at the top line, 163 billion in 2019 and 146 billion in 2017. When we look at the numbers from 2019, we see that if we add up the costs, the broadcast program and operations costs, and the other costs of revenues, we get about $65 billion, over $163 billion in total revenue. And because of that, we can see that under 50% of the total revenue is spent on the cost of revenues. So that's another good indication that this is probably a heavier fixed cost business. Uh, In addition, we can see that that same trend holds true in 2018 and 2017. We can also see that the selling general and administrative costs have increased over time. And you, you can see that having that commensurate percentage of increase carries through to the cost of revenues. So there isn't a lot that's changing directly with the revenue of this business. However, there are some things that the organization is spending, namely marketing, which should fall in the selling general and administrative, and other direct costs, such as the other costs of revenues that are increasing every year. 
And in fact, when you take the costs that are increasing every year, you see that we have total operating expenses that are increasing at nearly commensurate to the service level arrangements and the top line, which means that really, if we're going to make higher profit in total, we're going to have to operate even more intelligently on our debt. So we'll have to have less debt. We see that the opposite is true. AT&T has actually taken on more debt and more interest expense. And we also need to make sure that we are paying less in taxes. And we can see that there was a tax due in 2019. So because of all of this, the earnings per share have decreased significantly in AT&T from 27 through 2019. What's the problem? If we bring it back up one level, AT&T is a fixed cost business. So they have towers and they have programming on their uh, Time Warner and DirecTV programs and channels, and they're paying fixed amounts for those. They're either creating the content or they're licensing the content. And when they're like thinking about the broadcasting, they're paying a fixed amount for the broadcast spectrum. However, when you have a usually decreasing number of subscribers, which they have seen in streaming wars and also with their wireless subscribers, and an increasing cost you have the perfect storm in a fixed cost business. AT&T needs to manage one or the other, increasing their subscriber base, which is incredibly difficult to do in this very competitive wireless environment in the US when almost everyone already has saturated cell phone service, or they need to focus on cost reduction, which is really most likely the pathway forward. So while looking for increased revenues is going to be something that the company always should do, cost reduction is going to be really important for the next number of years. AT&T may have seen its heyday, but it is a company that reinvented itself at least once already, and it has the opportunity to do that again. So we'll see what we see from AT&T in 2020 and beyond. We hope you enjoyed this episode on AT&T. We provide content just like this on Strategy Simplified every week. Please subscribe and leave a review if you loved this. In addition, please share with your family and friends. For more information on consulting or strategy fields, please reach out to us at managementconsultant.com.